Hi everyone, in this video we will talk about Gradle, an advanced toolkit to automate and manage the build process. Gradle is the build tool of choice for Android development. It controls a number of different things including describing what devices the app is actually built to run on, compiling code and resources to executable code, declaring and managing dependent code and libraries also known as dependencies, signing apps so that users can download them from Google Play and running automated tests. It's good to understand the basic of Gradle since you are going to modify these Gradle files in the future and it should not feel mysterious magic to you. When you click that run button, a series of Gradle commands compile your source code, your dependencies and any associated resources into an Android application package or APK. APK is the file format that is used to distribute and install Android applications. After it's built by Gradle, Android Studio transfers the APK to your physical device or emulator. It installs the APK and runs it. Your project contains two types of Gradle files. There is a Gradle file for project build settings and then there is a specific Gradle file for each module of your project. Modules are collections of source files and build settings for a discrete unit of functionalities in your app. Right now you only have one module by default which is called app. This is the case for many apps. But when you will build larger applications, you want to split apart functionalities. Write your own libraries or support things like Android where you will end up making multiple modules. This will each have their own build.gradle files. Let's go ahead and take a look at the generated Gradle files and see what's there by default. Now open your project. All of your Gradle files are here. You can see there are two files named build.gradle. By the way, the Gradle website actually has a pretty helpful guide that goes through what each of these lines in each of these files does. Here I am going to just point out some of the most important concepts. But you can always go and read these guides for the full picture. Back at our project, I am going to go ahead and open this project build.gradle file. And now if I switch the view to project view, I will see that the build.gradle file that I am talking about is right inside the root my first app folder where the other build.gradle file is inside the app folder. Alright, now let's actually take a look at this particular file. These two lines of code here define the repositories available for this entire project. Repositories are remote servers where any external code will be downloaded from. For example, any Android library is downloaded from our repository. This Google repository here contains core Android libraries maintained by Google. And Maven Central is a large repository popular among open source publishers. Dependencies are external code such as libraries that your project relies or depends on. This here is the project wide dependency block that specifies dependencies needed for your whole project. Now Gradle is a generic build tool so it doesn't automatically know how to build Android projects or Kotlin files which is why these two dependencies are pretty important. This is where you can download all of the Gradle scripts for actually building the Kotlin Android apps. These scripts are part of Gradle plugins and these dependencies say which versions of plugins to actually download. You are going to see where those Gradle plugins are used shortly. Now I am going to go ahead and take a look at the second build.gradle file which is in the app folder. This Gradle file is responsible for configuring how to set up this app module. Now I am going to open this. Here at the top we can see the plugins that I was talking about. These plugins are needed by Gradle to know how to build Android and Kotlin projects. Below you can see compile SDK version, mid SDK version and target SDK version. This refers to different OS versions that your app actually supports. Mid SDK is the minimum supported version. And you selected this way back when you first created the app. Meanwhile your compile SDK version is the API version that your app is actually compiled against. If you end up using features that were only released in version 31 and higher of the API, your compile SDK version should be actually that high. Now target SDK version 
doesn't actually affect anything about how your app is compiled but it does implies what version you have actually tested your app on if you have set your target sdk to 31 and your min sdk to 21 that implies that you have tested your app on devices running version 21 to 31 generally you should try to keep both your compile sdk version and your target sdk version to the most recent version of android which at the time of this recording is what we are doing here the unique application id is defined right here the application id is super important because it's the unique identifier that android and google play both use to identify your app for example it's not possible to install two different apps on the same device that shares the same application id it's also not possible to publish an app to google play with an application id that has already been used to publish another app therefore it's super important for this to be unique because of this it's very common to use the reverse domain name that you or your business owns followed by the name of your app the logic being that there only one company or person will actually have a ownership over the web domain don't worry if you don't own a web domain as you won't be publishing this app to play store now by default this application id will match the package of our app if you open the main activity you can see the package name is com.sunit.myfirstapp this defaults were chosen way back when we set up the project finally if you scroll down you can see the dependencies block here these are the dependencies that are needed for our app gradle will download these dependencies on our behalf from the repositories that you specified in the project build.gradle file you are actually going to be editing this part of the gradle script most often so that's it for now if you are facing any android related problems feel free to reach me out in my discord server you can find the joining link in the description below and if you like this video and want to watch more android development videos like this consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel and see you in the next video